461. In glycolysis, the reaction of glucose, which we'll know it as glue, to form glucose 6-phosphate, which we will know as G6P, requires ATP to be present as described by the following equation. So we have glucose plus ATP, which is basically energy, will yield us glucose 6-phosphate plus ADP. And this reaction, at standard, because there's a notch here, equals negative 17 kilojoules. In this process, ATP becomes ADP, summarized by the following equation. So then they give me this, ATP yields ADP, and this is also a delta G notch of negative 30 kilojoules. Determine the standard free energy change for the following reaction and explain why ATP is necessary to drive this process. So here we go. We need to find out what the delta G is when glucose just turns into glucose 6 phosphate. Okay. So they give me basically two equations with delta G values. So I just have to use these equations to just get what I want. This is kind of like Hess's law, but with delta G. Now just work at one compound at a time. In this case, you only want to focus on your glucose. So you look at the two equations and you say to yourself, which one has the glucose in it? It's obviously the first one. Here it is. What side is the glucose on? I want this on my right side. Sorry, I still don't know my left from my right. <laughs> anyway, I want it on my left side. And in this case, it's on the left side. So there's one. Here's one. They're both on the left side. So I'm just going to replicate the first equation. Glucose plus ATP yields G6P plus ADP. And the delta G notch for this is spontaneous because it's negative. So negative 17 kilojoules. Okay. Well, now generally we go on to the next uh, compound, right? Now just know that whenever you use a compound, you can never use it again. So the first one is out. We're only allowed to use the second one. But if you notice that this compound that we want, it's only in the equation that we just used. It's right here, right? Maybe I'll just highlight. I already have this. This is all done for. And I already have this. So it looks like I actually have to get rid of things. Seems like I want to get rid of the ATP. ATP is not in this equation, and neither is ADP. ADP is not in this equation. Well, that's why I'm going to use this second equation to cancel these out. But however, remember, if you want to cancel out the ATP, that means on your second equation, that ATP has to be on the opposite side. Opposite side things cancel out. Same side guys do not. So if I want to cancel out that ATP, that ATP has to be on the product side. And if I want to cancel out the ADP, that's got to be on the opposite side as well. So now I have the expression ADP yields ATP. But if I read my equation here that they gave me, they gave me the flip. ATP yields ADP. So essentially what I did was I flipped this equation. That's totally fine, but we just have to flip the delta G. So whenever you flip a equation, the delta G value has to flip, meaning positives become negatives, negatives become positives. So it was a negative 30 here, but since I did the reverse, it now becomes a positive 30 kilojoules. I used this equation, so I can't use it again, and now we're done. ATP will cancel out with ATP. ADP will cancel out with ADP. And you're left with the equation that you want. Glucose yields glucose 6-phosphate. And now to get that delta G value, which is what we wanted, you always will add your delta G values together. So basically it's negative 17 plus 30 or 30 minus 17. It does not matter. I'll just put it as this part, just because that's what it says. Negative 17 plus 30 is a positive 
13 kilojoules. And that is the answer to the actual determine the standard free energy change. Standard free energy, Gibbs free energy, tomato, tomato, is 13 kilojoules. But now the, the last thing we have to do is just explain why ATP is necessary to drive this process. Well, it, it seems that if we don't have ATP, right, this would be basically if we didn't use any energy, aka the ATP. If we just wanted to perform this by itself, it's saying that it's going to be 13 kilojoules. But remember, a delta G, that's a positive value, which is what this is, is non-spontaneous. That means that if you need to go from glucose to glucose 6-phosphate, you need to bring in an additional source of energy. This going from left to right will not happen. It's not favored. That's what non-spontaneous means. In order for this to run, you need some additional external source of energy. And who's the energy that drives the source? Ah, it's the ATP. It's a, it is spontaneous. So that's the extra push. So why is ATP necessary to drive this process? Because without it, it's going to be a non-spontaneous reaction. So you need ATP to turn into ADP to make it, to make the overall process spontaneous. And that is seen in the first uh, balanced equation here. The overall general process is negative 17, and that's spontaneous. And that's it. Really hope this helped. What'd you think? This will, you'll definitely get into more when you do biochemistry, if you guys are ever exploring the subject of biochemistry. Um, check back on the channel because maybe by then we'll have biochemistry questions up for you. We would love to do that subject. My brother and I, we'd love biochemistry. And that's definitely one on our list to do. So just check the, ch the channel periodically back. We have so many different subjects that we want to do in the future. So hopefully we can help you guys out. We have physics and math on the channel at the moment, but maybe we have more subjects when you're viewing this video. So go check it out. Thank you so much. And I hope you guys have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.